Perfect. Thank you all for tuning in. Welcome. It's great to be here today. Uh, we certainly do appreciate you taking the time to join us today as we discuss how to price and sell plant health care services in the tree industry. And a lot of the folks listening to this call today or joining us on Zoom, some of this will be review, uh, but I'm guessing that there will be some, some key points and some parts of this that you'll be able to take out and hopefully apply to your place of business. Or uh, for nothing else, at least you'll get that one ISA CEU that uh, Carol will send out as we get towards the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat box. We do ask that you would please keep your camera turned off and your microphone on mute as well. So when we think about the top brands and the top businesses in the entire world, what comes to mind? A lot of people, and in fact, Forbes actually went out to say that the top five most recognizable brands in the world are Apple, Amazon, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, and of course, our friends at Google. Now, what all these companies have in common is they have an extreme ability to adapt. They've also changed their business models over the years to fit with some of the current trends and some of the directions that those industries are going. Today, we're going to see if you can't remember these, these five different companies, these five brands, and maybe try to pick apart today's presentation and think about it, how these brands got to where they are and what's correlated to some of the things that we're going to talk about. I would also ask that you put your own company up there on that screen and just after today, look at it through different eyes. Think about it a little bit, a little bit differently. I've met a handful of you, but for those who I haven't yet, my name is Corey Lofi. I'm the territory manager and arborist out here in Colorado. And I've spent the last seven years or so going around from business to business, municipality to municipality here in the Rocky Mountain region, basically just trying to overhaul, trying to help. I know a lot of the folks who have made it onto this call, we've actually worked together, um, some collaboration, some consulting. So today's presentation is going to be combining a lot of conversations that we've had over the years, putting it all in one place, hopefully in an effort to better help you and your business, because that is the ultimate goal. We want to help your business. We want to help you save trees as well. A little bit about ArborJet. We were established a little over 20 years ago, and we're still a privately held company based just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. We also have a majority interest in Ecologel BioPro, which historically was more of a turf program. However, as this industry is evolving, we're actually starting to take some of those products and some of the science and technology from turf and we're using it in trees. And we're seeing some pretty cool results. We have a, a, a wide variety of products. Uh, we do everything from turf to landscape. Uh, we work with uh, municipalities, universities, you name it. And certainly our end users, we love supporting you guys. We couldn't be here without you. So thank you for that. We do design, develop, and manufacture our own products. So all of the technology uh, that we have, we have special labels written up, all sorts of good stuff. Um, most of the money, most of the profits are actually pumped back into the business so that we can come up with the next product or the next piece of equipment to help you and your business um, and certainly help keep our urban forests alive. We are committed to environmental uh, responsibility, and you'll see that uh, certainly the more that you work with us. And then uh, once again, we cover you on all aspects from the crown down. So one of the most common questions that we get, and perhaps today you found yourself on this call not knowing, what is plant health care? Well, generally speaking, and this is generally, uh, plant health care is a modified integrated pest management approach. So IPM would be another common word for it. You'll hear us using those, those words interchangeably. This is where we're looking at the care of these plants um, from a full 10,000 foot view. We're looking at health, condition, many other factors. Some of the factors that will affect how we're caring for these plants will be the plant species. Not every plant has the same nutritional demand. 
not every plant has the same insects and diseases. We'll talk more about that in just a bit. The location and the condition of the plant is greatly going to dictate how you as a professional are coming in and treating that plant. If it's a tree that's overhanging a backyard porch and a pool, you're probably going to approach it a little bit different than if it's a front yard tree surrounded by nothing but turf. So these are things that we need to be looking at. Also, look at the environment. I think in our industry, at least in our boar culture, we talk all the time about right tree, right site. Uh, we also need to talk about what's the right care for it. How are we going to encourage this tree to live a long and healthy life? We're also going to look out for some mechanical issues. And there are sometimes, sometimes there are uh, instances where we can come in, address the problem by using some of the tools we have. Maybe you, you use uh, an air spade or some air compressed tools like that. That would be an example of a mechanical approach to plant health care. And the final approach, if necessary, is the chemical approach. Now, being an arborist and a manufacturer rep for a chemical company, I look at this and we put this towards the end because we need to have this holistic, realistic, comprehensive approach to plant health care. And we need to understand that chemical is just a small part of it. So a lot of folks, when they're just getting into the industry, they want to know, why do I need this? Why plant healthcare? Why PHC? Well, the obvious answer is so that you can have healthy plants. Enough said. You are getting paid uh, by your client to provide a service. You're the expert in your field, maybe in your area. You're charging top dollar, whatever it is you are, so that you can give them healthy plants. With plant health care, the services that you're offering are renewable. If you could think about a traditional tree service, you might show up to prune the tree every three to five years, depending on where you are in the country. You may even show up to do removals. Friends, how often can you remove a tree? Well, once if you do it correctly. How often do you do plant health care? Well, depending on what program you, you build and what is warranted on that property, you could be there every single year or every other year, depending on the pest. Plant health care services are often high margins. We should also add high margins, low overhead. So in an F-150 or a Prius or whatever you prefer to drive, you could actually go out and net more in one day with one technician than what you could with a three to five man crew, respectively. So it's something to consider. Also with that less overhead, uh, think about it. What does a chipper and bucket truck and chip truck and grapple and all of that cost versus buying a used car, throwing in some trunk injection equipment and going at it? And certainly there are different, different degrees and different avenues you can take this, but just something to consider. High margins, less overhead. This also lets you be a full service. So we'll talk more in just a little bit about this. But being a full service means that you're not handing over your leads or your customers to somebody else. Your customers are gold. Help them, grow them. And what this is also going to do is it's going to help you look more professional because whether you offer these services or not, at least you can have the conversation with folks about stuff. And you can be educated and let folks know, hey, at this time, we're not doing services, but we know enough to prescribe it or have somebody else come and do it. That's going to speak volumes and it's really going to help your business. Now, plant health care and the opportunities therein are also dictated by some of these things. What's your location? Certainly, if you have a cactus or desert landscape, you have a different plant material than if you're somewhere in Florida or Hawaii. So you've got to understand that and look for your opportunities in that area. Plant material. Now, as we get into this, we'll further discuss that most pests that we find in the urban landscape are what we would call plant specific or pest specific, which means that they're only really focused on attacking one plant. For instance, I know we've got folks from all over the country here, emerald ash borer, pretty common topic. You're probably not going to find emerald ash borer killing maple trees. Maples have enough headaches already. 
So that's just an example of a plant-specific pest. Also, it's important to be aware of what are some of the existing pests in the area. You know, uh, I remember in, in being in the field, being in production, there are always certain things that you can look for. And if you don't know where to start, we're happy to help you. Another really good place to start uh, would be a local extension agent or continue to come to classes, webinars, things like this. And we'll get you dialed in. Plant health care is also going to be uh, determinant and the, the prescription that you offer will be determined based on the timing. So we need to understand how long are these chemistries good for, where do they accumulate in the tree, and how are they going to affect those target pests. If you have a product, for instance, like AceJet that we know is only good for about 45 days within a tree, you better make sure that you're targeting that pest right when they're feeding, right when they're active. That way you get that product in, it does a knockdown and you go on your way. Also, we would encourage that you go ahead and get your applicator's license. Certainly for, for most chemical treatments, it is required. Uh, however, there are a lot of tree fertilizers. And um, as we talk about this holistic approach, you could be doing things like air spade and some of these other tools where you don't need it, but it's probably a good idea. So make sure you check with your local extension, Department of Ag, and uh, we'll get you dialed in correctly. The final thing is make sure that you're aware. Just understand that we live in an ever-changing environment. The urban forests of today are now more interconnected than they've ever been. I mean, we can, you can ship stuff from, uh, from Denver clear all the way to California in a matter of days, hours. Depends how fast you drive. So just understand that the things are always changing and uh, keep an eye out. Be aware that the services that you offer today or the programs that you're offering today will very likely change, very likely. Now we've got folks from all over the country and I understand internationally on this call today. So what we would suggest is you build a custom uh, pest treatment calendar. And this is gonna be specific based on what your focus as a business is and geographically where you are. So an example of this, would look like something what's on the screen now. Now this is a very general calendar. If we're talking about boring insects, aphids, things like this, this is very general. And if you would like a copy of this, uh, be sure to take down my contact information at the end and we'll make sure that you get one. And if you're from outside the Rocky Mountain region, just shoot me a quick note and we'll connect you with the right arborist that can get you one of those. Now, as an exercise and something that we've done with a lot of folks that are actually on this call today is we've actually gone and we've helped you create your own custom calendar. Now, what we found over the years, what I've found over the years is that applicators and arborists and business owners, it's a lot easier to identify the tree species than it is the pest in most cases. And remembering that these, these insects and some of these diseases are pest specific you could do a really good job if you can just narrow down what is the plant, what are my opportunities with that plant? And what we would say is this would be something that we would collaborate with you on. We're not looking to just push this out, give this to anybody. We don't need anybody just drilling holes in trees or spraying chemical in the air, right? We wanna actually work with you to make sure that you have something that you could put your name behind. And once again, if, if you are interested in that, or you'd like to consult in any degree, please don't, don't hesitate to reach out. Now, something we do as, as professionals in this industry, um, and it doesn't matter if you've been in the industry for 20 years or, or, or two months, well, but what we do in plant healthcare is we go through this diagnostic checklist. And the first thing we do with this diagnostic checklist, identify the host plant. This is the common trend that keeps coming up, right? Like we talked about, if you know the plant, you know the handful of insects and diseases that could be on there. Now, lucky for the folks living out here in the Rocky Mountain region, we don't have as many opportunities as some of the folks out on the East Coast or maybe in California where there's more plant material, but there's also a better environment that's more conducive to insect life. So identify the host plant. That's the first thing we're going to want to do. The next things that we really want to focus on are what are the signs and what are the symptoms? So signs are a direct correlation 
that you can tie back to a causal agent. In the case of emerald ash borer, a D-shaped exit wound would be a sign of emerald ash borer. We also talk about looking for symptoms. Now, symptoms are the plant's response to that pest. In the case of emerald ash borer, a symptom could be canopy decline, maybe water sprouts coming out throughout the canopy. Something you're going to want to do is also determine the plant value. Exactly once, I went out to a commercial property, took an inventory, looked at every single tree, cataloged everything, looked at all the opportunity, spent hours, hours putting together a proposal, handed it over to the homeowner, only for them to say, uh, yeah, you know, we really don't have that in the budget. We're just going to remove these trees anyways. We just wanted a second opinion. What a colossal waste of time. And you may find that it might just be a tree or two that the homeowner wants to get rid of. And, you know, depending on what the pest is, how far along it is, uh, and why they want to get rid of it are all things that need to come into that equation. So determine the plant value. That's key. The next thing you're going to want to do, if you're qualified to do so, would be propose a treatment. In the case of emerald ash borer, you've got many treatment options. Soil applied trunk spray, trunk injected, and then you even have a couple trunk injection options. So make sure you're educated and up to date on what some of those treatments are. Next thing you're gonna do when it's properly timed would be to go ahead and propose the treatment, okay? And then do that treatment, of course, time properly. The final thing in this diagnostic checklist that we would encourage is that folks go out there and they evaluate the site. Over the years, I can't tell you how many different companies I've worked with that will just say, hey, Corey, we've done this for 20 years. This is what my dad did. This is what we've always done. Here we go. Well, chances are, depending on the pest, if you've been doing things the same way for 20 years, you might be missing out on something, okay? So just food for thought. One of the other frequent questions we get is, how do you price these plant healthcare services? With a million products out there, a million insects, a million diseases, how do you do it? Well, something that we would ask you to consider is the pest, right? Certain pests are going to have very specific treatments. The timing specific. The application method is specific. Sometimes the chemical cost and the equipment that's required is very specific. You also need to incorporate for your applicator hours that are required. Now, an interesting thing about this is there are some treatments that you could do, some trunk injection options that you could do that your applicator hours would be a little bit more than if you went out and sprayed it. But here's the thing. You might be able to select a product that lasts for two years within a tree. So instead of trying to show up and time six sprays perfectly, why not just go out there and trunk inject once? And then maybe you can focus on other things like building the soil health, building the, the soil profile on the microbes so that you have a healthier tree. It's food for thought. Something else you might want to do is uh, know the industry. Shop around uh, in the, the tree industry and the landscape industry. Most people, by the time they're 25, 30, have worked for a handful of companies. So you probably have an idea of what your competition's charging or maybe what, what your competition could charge, but you're not. So know the industry. Um, I think the biggest and probably one of the most valuable piece of, pieces of advice that we could give uh, as it relates to pricing out these plant healthcare services would be, be consistent. Whether you're one sales rep out there in the field or you've got a whole crew, just be consistent. Have something that's replicable. Um, the easiest way to do that is probably uh, charge by the diameter inch right? DBH, right? We all know that's four and a half feet above, above the ground in inches. If you're doing fertilizer, you may charge by square feet. And if you're on a commercial property, or maybe you're just going out to do some spray applications, sometimes taking a tree inventory and charging by the tree is the best way to go. Now we could talk about how to price services uh, until we're blue in the face. And a lot of folks just want this magic equation that we can give you. And unfortunately, we can't. 
And we do this for a couple of reasons. If you'd like to work with us, we're happy to tell you where the industry is, where the markets are, where you could be, especially if you have something that can really differentiate you above your competition. But there are too many factors at play. You've got to keep track of what licenses cost, what's registration, um, all sorts of things. So we talk, we, we talk about pricing services. You really could take this uh, quite a few directions. Today, we're just being real, real general uh, for you. Something that's often overlooked, uh, especially in the tree industry, is who's your ideal customer? Who's your ideal customer? And where are you going to find them? So something to consider uh, that we'll talk more and more about uh, as this uh, conversation goes on, but something that you might want to look at is what is your service area? And what's the location of your target customer? We've talked about this uh, a few times already. But your most expensive part of this whole plant healthcare gig isn't the chemical. It's not the man hours. It's the opportunity cost. It's the time that uh, the windshield time that your crew is spending sitting, driving from job to job to job. So the bigger issue is actually, how do we route this stuff properly? There's a reason why delivery drivers like UPS and FedEx don't make left turns. Okay. And it's not because they're not NASCAR fans. They just don't want to spend the time at, at lights and stop signs. Also, some other things that you might be considering are what are the age, gender, maybe ethnicity is important for the services that you're offering. You may want to look at income bracket. And this is all information that if you use the web properly, you can harness. You can pull all this. You can actually buy lists from other companies, take that and run. We would encourage, though, find your uh, ideal customer. Maybe there's some other qualities that I haven't even considered. If, if you're a turf company, um, maybe you've already got clients in your system or customers in your system. What you could do is expand upon that. So you've been offering them a turf service for so long. Let's build a tree care service. That might be a, a really good quality to look for if you have that going for you. If you are already in business and maybe you've been doing this for a couple of years and you've had good success, congratulations. That, that's awesome. If you wanna kind of reevaluate or look at this through a different lens, check out that 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule basically says that 80% of your business comes from the top 20% of your clients. So uh, go ahead, look at where is that top 80% uh, of your product or 80% of your sales, where is that coming from? Do you wanna go commercial? Do you wanna go just residential? Uh, these are all things that you can uh, you could tailor to your own business. It's kind of cool. Now, if I had to pick an ideal customer, I would look for someone who has a disposable income. Now, you may laugh at that, but it's pretty simple. If you've got money to spend on a Ferrari and rims and everything, you, you probably can afford tree care. If you pay your debts, that's a good customer. Actually, my favorite customers are the ones that just say, send the invoice. We're not putting this out to bid. We don't want other estimates. We don't, we don't need that junk here. And that's how you know that you've really started to develop and create a valuable relationship when they just give you that level of trust. It's pretty cool. So if you can attract those clients, um, might be something to think about. Now, I'm not going to sit here today and tell you that there's one selling method that works better than the other, because I don't know that there is. I haven't seen the data. But what you should know is that there are quite a few different options that you have, okay? One of the most common is probably the Sandler selling, right? That's where you have those seven steps that you can walk through. Heck, if you hit the Google button and type in Sandler selling process, you'll probably come up uh, with some of those steps. There's also seven steps to selling which is where you walk through a pipeline of, okay, who are the people we want to attract? We, they then turn into a suspect prospect uh, that you can approach them. That's a, that's a whole nother process and a whole nother way of doing things. And the interesting thing is all these methods kind of walk you through the same thing. The other one that you could look at is action selling for those that uh, took a, an action selling course, maybe in the late nineties, early two thousands, it still had a bunch of steps. But the big, the big thing with this is it's a process. It's something that you're doing that you can replicate time and time again. Now, 
over the years, I've actually developed my own sales process. And friends, we'll share it with you today. So the first thing that you're going to want to do when you show up on a property and you're, you're trying to sell plant health care or tree services is position yourself. Hi, my name's Corey. I'm an arborist with ArborJet. The next thing you're going to want to do is position your company. ArborJet has more ISA certified arborists than any other tree service in our area. That means that your trees will be cared for properly using the latest technology and the latest science. The next thing you're going to want to do is ask for permission. Mrs. Smith, as I'm walking around the property, if I notice some things going on with the landscape or the trees that we might be able to help with, would you like to know about that? If the homeowner right then and there says yes, that's an opportunity for you to sell more or at least help out that landscape a little bit more. The next thing you're going to want to do is identify the pain. So, Mrs. Smith, why are we out here today? Something that not a lot of folks like to talk about anymore is confirmed emotion. We're here to talk about your tree today. Your tree's leaves turn yellow and it drops all summer long and you can't use your picnic table. How does that make you feel? Pretty awful, right? Then you could position your solution, your, your solution. So Mrs. Smith, would it be beneficial to you if we could come in in the fall, apply a product to this tree and keep it green all growing season long and you only have to rake the leaves in the fall? What would that look like for you? How would that help? Then before you leave the property, go ahead and ask for the sale. What's the worst they're going to say? No. If they say no, all you have to do is pick a time and say, hey, I'll call you tomorrow at three. But then you actually need to call them tomorrow at three. I can't tell you how many different arborists, and I'm sure it's all sorts of different industries, that don't even ask for the sale. I don't know if it's fear of rejection or maybe just not comfortable with it yet, but always ask for that sale. Because if you don't, what that homeowner can do is just go do another Google search and find another applicator or find somebody else that could take care of a problem. Now, if that homeowner does approve uh, the sale or does want that treatment, the next thing that you're going to want to do is say, thank you so much. Really appreciate you. It's been fun. By the way, since we're in the neighborhood and you know that we're uh, arborists, is there anybody else that you think might benefit from our services? You just asked for a referral. Referrals are gold, gold. If this is confusing you friends, I, I apologize for that. Um, there's just a, you know, been many years of, of selling, whether it's to a homeowner, B2B, B2C, through distribution. But if there's one piece of take-home advice, it would be, as it relates to selling, it would be have a heart, show up, care, listen. You don't have to try to persuade or use any neuromarketing techniques you're not comfortable with. As long as you're showing up as a professional that wants to help, wow, that's got to be refreshing, right? No mechanic jokes here, but that's got to be refreshing. So friends, this is where I'm going to ask for a little bit of user participation. And this is also a very important tool and something that I was grateful to learn at a young age. If I gave you a $100 bill, what would you do with it? And go ahead, type it in the chat box if you could, or shoot me a text, but I'll give you a minute. If I gave you a $100 bill today, what would you do with it? Okay, a couple have come into chat. Let's take a look. Invest half, save half. I like it. Deposit, put it in my wallet, spend it. 10%, buy GameStop, buy Bitcoin, invest, check for counterfeit. <laughs> yeah, Brad, you know me. Advertise, save, say thank you. Wow, charity. Awesome. Buy groceries, nice. Okay, no, no need to add any more to that. Thank you, friends. The, um, the take-home message with, with that exercise right there is, we have uh, just under 200 people on this, on this call this morning. Almost everybody would do something different with it. 
even if you're going to invest it, you'd probably put it somewhere else. You'd, you know, you'd buy Bitcoin or Tesla, who knows. But the key takeaway point from that exercise is when you're talking to a homeowner or you're talking to a landscape manager, whatever it is, it's not your dollar. You don't know what the dollar means to them. So when you're positioning things, make sure that you're not saying that this is expensive or this will take quite a bit of investment because a hundred bucks to them is going to be different than what a hundred bucks is to you. So if you go in there as a professional and you just present things, as a matter of fact, we can provide this service. This is what the treatment looks like. This is when we do it. This is how much it costs. If you can maintain that level of professionalism, it doesn't matter if you're selling cars, houses, or plant healthcare, you're going to do just fine. And that's been proven time and time again. Something we're seeing a lot more in this industry, and, and we've actually seen it kind of, kind of change and, and kind of move, I would say, over the last 10 years or so, is we're starting to see more inventory, uh, inventory software. We're starting to see more people, more businesses, actually take inventories. Now, this is a time investment because you actually go out there and you need to identify what the tree is. But if you're being called out for a service, it's probably a good idea that you would mark what these trees are. It'll also let you know what your opportunities are. How about renewals? Renewals are, for most plant healthcare companies, they're 40 to 60% of what they will gross in a season is a renewable service. What I mean by that is call it a deep root fertilizer. You're going to show up every spring and fertilize these set amount of trees. Oftentimes, what you could do is you could just put folks up on a renewable, uh, a renewable services tab. And all you need to do is send them a little note in the spring. Hey, just wanted you to know, we're going to propose these treatments. Um, would you like to go ahead with the service? If you think about your cable company, they do something very similar to this, right? Month after month. They just pill you. They they just they just bill you, and maybe you're on auto pay, uh, whatever you are. But this is something that we're starting to see uh, plant healthcare companies go to. It's a, it's a higher level of service instead of some of these companies that maybe don't take the inventories or don't keep the records. This will really help set you apart. And some of the software that's out there would be like Tree Plotter, Arbor Gold. Uh, everybody's got their everybody's got their favorite or least favorite. What these renewals also allow you to do is to propose new treatments. So just because they declined a treatment in 2019 doesn't mean you couldn't propose it in 2020 or 2021 if it's still warranted, if it's still needed. Also, uh, one of the famous things that you'll hear in sales is when a customer says no, it doesn't mean no, it just means it's not good right now. So if they did previously say no, put it on the next one. It's easy. What's the worst they're going to do? Say no. Email opt out. <laughs> we also would encourage these inventories and the software because this can help you with your marketing focus. This is how you're going to tailor your message. If Mrs. Jones only has spruce trees on her property, you're probably not really getting anything good out of sending her an emerald ash borer notification, right? However, on the flip side, if you have these inventories and something like Emerald Ash Borer moves in, you can run a quick list, find out who in your service area has ash trees, and then either repropose those treatments or send them a note, a custom note. Hey, I was out to your property two years ago, noticed you had an ash. Uh, would you like an arborist to come out and take a look? That's how companies in some of these areas where emerald ash borer is just being found. And, and certainly there are uh, you know, dozens of other pests that you could do this for, including spot and latin fly. Uh, but you could just, you could send out this email blast and then position your company ahead of them. I remember when it made the news last summer in Fort Collins. I mean, it made the news. The tree companies that were set up that had these inventories simply shot out email blasts or they, they paid somebody to call out to these folks to say, hey, I remember you. You had an ash. Do you want to treat it? Everybody else is coming along, just picking up the scraps. Let's take a look into marketing. And an interesting thing about sales and marketing is that everybody's in it. If you're representing a business, if you're getting paid for a service, if you're employed, you are in sales and marketing. Something that we would encourage with all your sales and marketing is 
be brand consistent on all platforms, maintain a level of professionalism. Certainly in our industry, it's not hard to stand out as being the gold standard. Wow, that crew showed up. They were all wearing their helmets. They were all wearing their gloves. Everything was neat, clean. It was great. Or maybe that, that, that tree service showed up and they were tipping over bottles of beer and they had flip-flops and daisy dukes on. Who would you rather have on your property? Anyhow, being brand consistent, let's look at this company on the screen. Now, I can't tell you what part of the country either of these photos were taken. But what I can tell you is it probably wasn't in the same place. Something that, that, that Davey has done extremely well is they've branded themselves. You can look on a truck, a shirt, a helmet on their website, anywhere, and you see that Davey and the logo, you know who they are and what they're about. I would bet that almost uh, all the viewers here today could look at this screen. If we covered up the logos, um, you could look at this screen and you could go, yeah, there's a Davey that looks just like that in my area. So that's something they've done really well. So you may be able to incorporate something like that into your program as well. And as we reflect back on those top five brands in the world right now, maybe there's something you can take from there. Because you know, you know, every Apple device looks pretty similar. Have you, have you noticed that? The next thing you're going to want to consider is how do you market your plant healthcare? And we're talking about from a CMO, from a, uh, from a head marketing position, right? How are you marketing this? Well, with plant healthcare, the best thing to do is probably to create a marketing calendar. And understand with this calendar that they're probably not going to see or call you until it's too late for the season. So in the case of apple scab, which is a foliar fungus, uh, pretty, pretty common in the Midwest, they might be calling you in late July and August saying, oh, my, my, my leaves are on the ground. Of course, if you were planning for this service, you would have done treatments in the spring, you know. But if, if you're reaching out to them at that time, you could, you could send them a quick note in the spring. Hey, it's time to do your apple scab sprays or your apple scab trunk injection or whatever it is. Um, remember what it looked like last year. And then you can have a photo of what it did. It's actually pretty powerful stuff. Or maybe they're having you come out for chlorosis and it's, you're in Salt Lake or you're in Denver and it's July. And they're going, why are the leaves yellow? And they're falling on the ground. Well, after you educate them and you talk them through it, they'll go, well, what can you do now? Well, certainly you have some options, but it, it would be beneficial if you tell your customer, hey, you know, the best bang for your buck is actually going to be a fall trunk injection with Minjet FV. Because what that's going to do is it's going to provide a green up and health and protection for two to three seasons after. We'll call you before we come on out. Does that sound like something you'd like to go with? You'd be surprised how many customers just say, yeah, put, put me on the book, come on out, whenever works for you. So make sure you know your customer. Make sure when you're, when you're giving that message that, that, that you really hit some of those key points. Before and after photos. Now, this is something over the last seven or eight years traveling, working with companies, I'm always surprised how many people do not do this. Now, if you want to talk neuromarketing, our mind, you know, we, in North America here, we, we read from left to right. We always say before and after with just about everything. So if you can position your photos just like that, um, you'd be surprised how far it goes. And I can't tell you how many times uh, when I was in production, the homeowner would, would say or the property manager would say, oh, yeah, the, the tree looks great now, but it wasn't that bad the year before. Well, if you're looking in the case of the photos on the right there for chlorosis, that homeowner, that property manager might not have remembered just how bad that chlorosis was a year before. So if you're taking those photos, it's going to help tell that story. It's also going to do something else. It's also going to help show you the results so that you'll be more confident when you go out there and sell. Yeah, absolutely. This stuff works. It'll turn your tree deep green the next spring, and it's going to last for two to three years. Now, of course, we're talking about chlorosis, which can be caused by many things, but in this case, it would be a nutrient deficiency. We actually call this treatment on the screen there. Uh, we call this the superhero treatment because a lot of, a lot of pesticides that you do, um, some of the fungicides that you do, you can see results maybe, but this one really makes you stand out. 
And if you're a professional that can make a homeowner's tree or, or my tree look like this, uh, you must know what you're doing and you're going to get all sorts of referrals out of it. Referrals. So a pro tip about referrals would probably be this. Know your PCGs. Now, PCGs are primary client generators. Chances are, whether you're doing pruning, removals, or plant health care, you have somebody else out there that's referring, referring the work. Um, in, in the case of, of our industry, of the tree industry, we work real closely with a lot of other landscapers. They don't touch the trees. Maybe they're not insured. Maybe they don't have the knowledge to um, touch anything above six feet, above what the mower will clip uh, with their heads. So know your PCGs, but also thank them. If you are working with a landscaper and he's giving you all sorts of, of really hot leads and lots of referrals, thank him. When he or she says, can you come on out and take a look at this property? I know you're busy. Can you do this? Make them a priority. Take care of your own. And that should go without saying. And something else is always ask for a referral. Now, this keeps coming up. Referrals are like gold. The close rate on a referral is somewhere between 70 and 90%. Think about it. It's easy and it's free. What about websites? Now, digital media, websites, digital content, this is all a direction that things are, are, are moving for better or worse. And the companies that can adapt with it, that can learn how to use these platforms are really going to position them above the competition. With a website, how are you telling your story? What's the message that you're trying to get out? What's your value proposition? Better, better stated, what does your tree service do that your competition doesn't? Maybe you are the plant healthcare person. Maybe you're getting all the referrals in. Put that out there. Put it on social. Hey, we're, uh, we're Washington County's number one tree service for spraying, whatever. Put it out there. Let folks know. And then we would suggest that you always have a goal and a call to action or a CTA. Um, and that can be as easy as, you know, find a schedule an appointment or, you know, find a service provider near you. So an example of what this could like, look like is this next slide. Now, if you were a homeowner and you came across this screen, what would you be thinking? Would you be thinking, hey, this is brand consistent. They're using the same colors, maybe the same graphics. You might even see the logo two or three times in this in this screen? Is it user-friendly? Can you read the letters across the top? If you actually look on here and you want an estimate or you want to find somebody that can service you, is there a call to action? And can that homeowner easily type in their zip code? Well, we would hope they could. Certainly this website would get an A+. Pro, an a plus. And this would be something that I think would be a gold standard for how you might want to conduct your business. What about this? Now this came up on the screen as being one of the top five most recognizable brands or logos in the world. If you're looking up at the screen and you're going, I don't know what that's for, it's okay. It's okay. We'll talk about it. It's Google. Google is the king of search engines right now. How are your customers or your future customers going to find you on Google? Are you even listed on Google? Do you even know how to Google? So what you could do is uh, if you have a Gmail account open, you do, um, you can actually go to the top three, top nine, nine bars in the right, in the right corner. There's nine little dots. Looks like a domino. Click on that, go down to Google my business. You'll actually be able to go in there, enter your business, and then change some of these things like the photos or the address. And we would encourage that you get Google Maps verified everywhere that you are. If you're trying to attract customers near you, uh, that's something you're going to want to do. Something that we do if I'm out of town in a new location is I almost always look for, you know, dinner near me, lunch near me. So if you're not listed on a map, how are people going to find you? Also make sure that you have your correct name up there. It sounds kind of funny, but, uh, some competition can actually go in there and they might, they might create a false account for you. So um, you can actually just go in there and start to edit that information. All sorts of good friends at Google will then uh, reach out to you. 
make sure your contact's good. If you have a storefront, um, put that out there. Otherwise, uh, your phone, phone number is key. And then it's just one click away. They can just click on that and be in touch with you. Also on Google, what you'll find, and maybe you can reflect on this for yourself, is if you were looking for arborist near me or tree service near me, or maybe even lunch near me, you're probably more likely to go somewhere that has uh, you know, four, maybe five stars, and that has really good ratings, really good ratings. Once again, this is a way that you're having people refer work back to you. I think there's something to it. Also, make sure that you're including some photos just to catch the eye, especially if, if you're using a mobile device. Um, anything you can do to stand out. Certainly, text is, is less attractive. You're more likely to process and look at these images than you are to read every word on the screen anyhow. You can also use certain programs. Uh, within the Google My Business, there are insights and things that you can do to push your listing and your business to the top of the page. You can use AdWords uh, SEO for those who are less familiar. That's just search engine optimization. How are we going to get you in the top five spots on Google? And if all of this overwhelmed you, I apologize. I'm so sorry. I know we went over it at a high level. Um, if you have any questions about this, please shoot me a note. Otherwise, just go ahead and Google it. That would be a good solution. What about marketing emails? Now, I know we all love to get marketing emails. We also love to send them, don't we? So make sure that when you're actually sending these marketing emails, you have a targeted message for that end user, for that homeowner. Hey, Emerald Ash Borer is coming. We can do these treatments to save your trees. The treatment timing is da 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 da. These marketing emails can also be used for pest alerts, weather issues, maybe some important updates. Um, for instance, chlorosis. You get to Salt Lake, Boise, Colorado. You get to July, August, trees are turning yellow. Sometimes we have to educate the homeowner, let them know why it's a bad thing. So that would be an appropriate email. Now, if you need to just send an email to everybody in the, the whole database about your phone system being down or your email being down, uh, I want to rethink that one. Otherwise, you're going to get that unsubscribe button clicked pretty frequently. You can also use, uh, use our templates. We have quite a few online. If you actually look on Outlook, uh, Gmail, they have a couple templates there. Or you can create your own. I mean, it, it's, really not, it's really not that hard. Even for a lot of us um, non-tech savvy uh, tree folk, uh, we can figure this out. And if you can't figure it out, just go ahead and Google somebody that can do this for you. Uh, marketing agencies are all over the place. And if this isn't your specialty, maybe it's worth it to bring on one of them, bring on a marketing partner. We would also highly recommend that you have some kind of... Uh, CRM or software where you can keep track of things. For instance, if a homeowner has some advice for you or maybe some uh, less than positive feedback, give them a platform so that they can, they can really just uh, release and come to you and say, yeah, we didn't like when Bill's tree service was here and they parked on the driveway and they leaked fuel. Put a little note in there. Next time you're there, you'll be sure not to park there. Um, also, once again, what we're looking at here with the three different examples is be brand consistent. You can notice that you're seeing the same text, the same logos, um, oftentimes the same fonts throughout everything, whether it's an email signature or something else. It all looks like it's coming from the same place. Another thing you do is use constant contact, MailChimp. Uh, we talked about Google Analytics. Something, uh, and this may blow some folks' minds, is Every email that's sent out from a business, you know, whether it's Ford trucks or you know, Ram trucks or bake, whatever it is, they can actually look behind the scenes. Uh, they'll know what time it was sent, what time it was opened, if you did open it, how much time you spent on that page, where you clicked on that page, and what the call to action or outcome was. So they'll, they'll talk about open rates and click-through rates. The goal here is uh, just to find a message that you can tailor to your customers that's going to be effective because you want to bring value. With all of this communication, you want to bring value. So how do we do that? Social media. Now, what platforms are your customers on? Currently, 
uh, I'm part of a team that sells to business. Actually, we sell through distribution. So we found that LinkedIn is one of the most powerful platforms that we can be on, but it's probably not where everybody else's customers are. You'll know where your customers are. A lot of them are already on Facebook or on something like YouTube. Go ahead, post on it. Pictures and video content moves so fast. In addition, when you post a picture or when you post a video, you'll get what's called impressions. Those impressions, and the more you get of it, the more like buttons you get, the higher your post gets put on, or on a table. Basically, the more people are going to see it. So in, in the cases of LinkedIn and Facebook, the more people commenting on your post or the more people liking or giving a thumbs up, the faster that's going to send. Also on the YouTube note, uh, make a video off your cell phone. Almost everybody has one of these devices or two. Go ahead, take that phone and produce a little 10 second video or a 30 second video. Something to give that homeowner a little bit of value. Let them know that, hey, chlorosis is bad. This is what we can do for you. This is how it's gonna help your tree. It's cheap, it's easy. If you're using um, business analytics, you can find out instantaneously how well you're doing. Also, uh, friends, if you can do this responsibly in a social media post, make sure you're using hashtags. Now, when I was putting this presentation together, I was thinking we're going to attract a diverse crowd. They might not all resonate with a hashtag. What's a hashtag? Did you do it last night? I don't know. If you need help with this, please reach out to us or you can find a, a marketing professional in your area. They'll help you get the right, the right hashtags. And they'll help you, help you open a PDF if you need it. Now, this should almost go without saying in today's day and age, but you can use your digital marketing for either good or bad, right? A good example would be this. Probably one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, super nice dude with one of the greatest teams of all time. He's putting out a message right there. He's saying success isn't owned, it's leased, and the rent is due every day. That gives me goosebumps. It's a beautiful thing. So you could use your marketing team and come up with something like this. Come up with a quote. Come up with something, uh, a Bible verse, whatever it is. Something powerful. Or you could use it for bad. Okay, and we'll give you a second to read that. I don't think uh, you need much more than that. This is a platform that's going to be around for many, many years. If you post it, make sure you check your facts. Make sure you check your spelling. Also, I would like to let folks know that that photo on the right of Mr. Mr. Dennis Rodman was not approved by our marketing team. It's not, it's not an ambassador that we would want for our brand. However, in this case, I think it illustrates a very important point, right? Choose your spokesperson wisely. Choose the content that you're pushing out there wisely. So there are certain places that you can go to get some help. Uh, we have all sorts of digital templates and content for you. We would advise that you put together a custom handout. So something that uh, I used all the time when I was in production uh, is you can actually create this for your team, download it from our website, just put your own logo, company name, all that in the bottom. This is a really easy way to streamline your sales process. Hi, Mrs. Jones, this is the pest that you have. This is the tree you have. This is what it'll do. Here's the service, uh, here's the cost, whatever you gotta do. Hand it to them. What do you think? Would you like to go, and ha go ahead and have these services scheduled? If they say no, at least they have a hard copy. Now, something I have a really uh, hard time with is if you send them just a link or something, because if you send them a link via email, what they're gonna do is that link is gonna take them to another link, which is gonna take them to a website, which is gonna have them clicked and removed four times from where you're at. So, you know, print media, it's not dead. It's still good stuff. Also business cards. Make sure everybody in your company has a business card. Make up titles. It doesn't matter. But give them a business card because they are a reflection of you as long as they're doing things in a positive way. Also door hangers. Now, door hangers are cheap, they're easy, and they're effective even today. And it's really not that hard if you have a technician who's maybe taking care of four or five houses in a community. Hey, as you're in between houses, maybe go knock on a door and uh, leave a door hanger. It's a great way to generate traffic. 
Now, friends, I'd like to share with you this photo on the screen. If you looked at that, chances are you're kind of looking at it from a couple of different perspectives. Maybe you're thinking, hey, oh, bummer for your house. Maybe you're thinking, oh, what I would do is I would get the knuckle boom out there. Or I'd get the grapple truck. What if we did this? Now, what emotion do you have? Now, a lot of folks might look at that photo and go, oh, mom, I'm sorry, we should have had an arborist out there earlier. Or my reaction was, oh, Nana, grandma, poor thing. What this is doing, folks, is it's reminding us of a couple things. One is with sales and marketing, we're trying to generate an emotion. We also want an action to come out of this. So you could come up with some clever title like have your trees pruned before uh, wind season or snow season or whatever it is. But it's also for this reason too is we're out there trying to help people. I think too often we get caught up in the business end of things. How much money can I make? What are my margins? All this. We're, we're dealing with people's lives. You don't know what that tree might have meant to her. You don't know what it meant to their family. But if you can put out some content like this, that might have another human in that picture or in the material, you're going to have some emotion generated from that viewer. Check out one of those top five brands that we showed you earlier. Look on those platforms. Look at those commercials. I bet you'll see a lot of people. I bet you'll see a lot of emotion coming out. In addition to that, friends, if, if you want some additional resources to everything that we've been covering today, um, you can go ahead, go to our website, uh, notice the call to action, the search budget up, button up there. You can also click on marketing materials and we'll go ahead and get you all of that. Also, if you take care of turf or maybe you're, you're switching your focus, sign up for the Hydrotain Advantage program. That's a, a company that can provide all sorts of digital and print uh, content for you that you can just customize and leave every time that you're on a homeowner's property. You can also go to Print Runner and Vist Vistaprint those are really great resources, um, super easy to upload documents, and uh, they ship to you generally within, within a couple of weeks. Final plug would probably be for Arbor, Arbor Mobile, which is a new app that we just put out. What it's going to do is it's going to help you identify different problems, solutions. Uh, there'll be all sorts of uh, label information on there. We don't sell our products or equipment directly to the end user. Um, you have to, you have to, you have to find it. You have to go through distribution. So there's a little button on there that'll help. Or if your equipment broke or you don't know, uh, you need a little assistance, you can even call us. And um, the friends in the office would love to hear from you. Also, there's Tree Tag, which is another app in there that'll will keep things organized for you. And you have a project calculator. So if you didn't like the slide earlier about the magical equation on how to price some of these services. Uh, maybe check out that project calculator. Finally, friends, if you're listening from uh, out, out here in uh, the Rocky Mountains, thank you for joining. Thank you for being a part of this. Um, chances are we've already spoke. If we haven't, just shoot me a quick note. I'd love to get in contact with you. Anybody else across the country, if you're dealing with trees, um, we've got an arborist or a rep who's out there for you. And then if you want to have more of a turf focus or talk about uh, maybe some of the agronomy behind uh, some of the fertilizer things we're doing, we do also have some sports turf specialists and friends out there that can help you with that. Um, and we're happy to connect you with them. So you can either go to our website for that or shoot me a quick note. Finally, we do uh, have Launch 21 coming up, which is where we're going to showcase some of the new products and equipment that are coming out from Arborjet and Ecologel here in 2021. You can go ahead over to that website and sign up for our exclusive launch event. Finally, if you need more ISA CEUs or you're finding something else on the screen right now that might benefit you or your business, go ahead, click on one of those tabs or find the website, sign up. Finally, thank you friends so much for tuning in. Thanks for joining us. Once again, my contact information is up there on the screen. Please feel free to text, call me, email me, whatever works best for you. If you're having problems with your equipment, go ahead and call that technical support number. And then finally, uh, look for us on LinkedIn, Facebook. If you enjoyed this talk, consider downloading and subscribing to the Discovering Forestries podcast, which is the green industry's fastest growing podcast. And I'm happy to be a, a part of it with our friend, Joe Aitken. And as always, thank you. And uh, please tell a friend about us. Appreciate you.